वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द यू वी एल ट्रैक्ट एंड बिफोर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द अप्लाइड एनाटोमी एंड द फंक्शंस ऑफ द यू वी एल ट्रैक्ट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम वेयर डज द वर्ड यू वी आर कम्स फ्रॉम एंड द वर्ड यू वी आर इज डिराइड फ्रॉम द लैटिन वर्ड यूवा यू वी ए it is derived from this latin word called uva and which means grapes and this is so for one sole reason it is because of the grape like appearance of the highly vascular layer called uvea especially when when the white sclera was stripped away the uvea has this grape like appearance because of his high vasculature and pigmentation hence the word uvea is derived from the latin word uva which means grapes the uvea essentially is composed of three important anatomical structures namely the iris the ciliary body and the choroid icc iris ciliary body and the choroid these are the three anatomical stru- structures which comprise the uveal tract the uveal tract as we discussed is a densely pigmented vascular coat of the eye densely pigmented and if we have to understand the uveal tract from correlating it to the coats of the eyeball the uveal tract is the middle vascular coat of the eyeball as we know that the eyeball is covered by three coats or three tunics the outermost coat is the corneoscleral coat the second coat and the middle coat is what we are discussing which is known as the uveal tract and from inside the innermost coat is the retina so three coats of the eyeball the corneoscleral coat the uveal tract and the innermost coat which is called as the retina so essentially if you understand that the uvea is sandwiched between the corneoscleral shell externally and the retina internally it is sandwiched is like a uh, in between structure between the corneoscleral shell from outside and the retina from inside so the uveal tract has three important parts from anterior to posterior if we look about and and talk about those parts anteriorly there would be the iris secondly there would be the ciliary body and then comes the choroid the iris the ciliary body and the choroid comprises the uveal tract when we talk about the vasculature and the pigmentation of the uveal tract and we understand that it is highly vascular we need to learn from where does it receive its blood supply it supplies the blood to most of the eye from the anterior and posterior ciliary branches of the ophthalmic artery this is an important question which needs to be answered what is the blood supply of the uvea it receives its blood supply from the anterior and posterior ciliary branches of the ophthalmic artery the anterior and posterior ciliary branches of the ophthalmic artery supplies the uveal tract and further the uveal tract plays an important role in providing vasculature and nourishment to the entire eye so the uvea also has certain important functions like it has some secretory and mechanical functions which includes production of aqueous humor improvement of aqueous outflow and the control of near accommodation we are going to discuss about these uh, important functions later in the discussion but primarily the function of uveal tract is to supply nutrition to the eye both in health and in disease supplying nutrition and vasculature to the eye essentially since it is vascular the uveal tract provides nourishment 
for the retinal rods and cones through the chorio capillaries which are present in the choroid and for the lens the crystalline lens through the aqueous humor which is produced by the ciliary body so this is interesting the uvea has multiple roles to play and also because of the trio of the iris ciliary body and the choroid when they when they three come together there is there is something very important that is happening within the eye which includes these important functions of the uvea we when we talk about the iris the iris has two important muscles the sphincter pupillae and the dilator pupillae the sphincter pupillae causes constriction of the pupil and the dilator pupillae causes dilatation of the pupil now this constriction and dilatation of pupil is a very important phenomena because it controls the amount of light that enters the eye and this entire phenomena is carried on by these important muscles present within the iris the iris is also responsible for the color of the eye secondly when we talk about the ciliary body the ciliary body consists of two parts the anterior plicated or the folded part which is called as pars plicata and the posterior plane part or the flat part which is called as pars plana pars plicata is the anterior folded part pars plana is the posterior flat or the plane part the ciliary muscle plays an important role in the process of accommodation now what is accommodation accommodation is the ability of the eye to see at various distances from near to far from far to near constantly this phenomena is happening throughout the day and there is an important process which is going on which is called as accommodation and the ciliary body is an important aspect of this entire accommodative apparatus the ciliary muscles play an important role in accommodation hence paralysis of the ciliary muscle can cause loss of accommodation ciliary body is also very critical because any trivial trauma or any minor immunological reaction can elicit severe inflammatory response from the uvea ciliary body plays a very important role in the production and outflow of the aqueous humor and this production and outflow of aqueous humor it it maintains the pressure within the eye which is called as the intraocular pressure so any mishap or any difficulty within the production and outflow of the aqueous humor can at times cause rise in the intraocular pressure and cause an ocular disease called as glaucoma so ciliary body is very very important considering the anatomy and the health of the eye when we talk about the choroid the choroid has a very rich vascular supply and in fact it is the uveal tract which has the maximum ocular blood flow of the entire eyeball and that is why any systemic association trivial eye trauma can increase immune response from the uvea especially because of its rich vascular supply the uvea may become involved in certain diseases due to certain changes that occur at a systemic level sometimes because of external trauma to the eye and these diseases can be present as an inflammation of the uvea called as uveitis they could also be present as a neoplasia sometimes there is a growth of abnormal blood vessels which is called as choroidal neovascularization so uvea may be involved in certain diseases through inflammation and other disease processes we have to understand that learning the anatomy of uvea and learning about the uveal tract is extremely important and critical for us clinically because any systemic conditions like tuberculosis 
toxoplasmosis, rheumatoid arthritis or even a trauma to the eye can reflect the uvea causing inflammation of the uvea which is called as uveitis. Therefore, in other words, uvea is a connector between ophthalmology and certain systemic diseases. So, if we have to revise what we have studied about the uveal tract, the uveal tract and the word uvea is derived from the word uva which is a Latin word which means grapes. Uvea is densely pigmented and highly vascular. Uvea is comprised of three important parts the iris, the ciliary body and the choroid and together they play an important function and the primary function being providing nourishment and blood supply to the eye. Thank you very much.